If you are preparing for a front end or react interview, stop scrolling. I'm about to discuss the top five real world scenario based interview questions. And here is the crazy part. There is a 90% chance that at least one of these will come in your next react interview. These are not boring theory questions. These are real world scenarios that most beginners fail and even the experienced ones. Watch this video till the end because every single question matters. This is part one. But if you want full list with detail answers, just comment interview questions and I'll share them with you. Let's jump in. Your next job offer might depend on this. The question one is your react app suddenly becomes slower after adding new features. How do you find and fix the issue? So this kind of questions are frequently asked in the interviews from freshers to like advanced interviews. So let's see how we can answer this question. Think of it like your phone is slowing down after installing too many apps. You need to find out which app is using the resources and it is making your phone slow. To answer it, the first thing we have to check is to use Chrome Dev Tools. Chrome Dev Tools. And in that, we can go to Performance tab. Okay. Performance. In this video, we are just going to see how we can answer these questions. But yeah, how to debug it, we will make a separate video on this. So uh, we can go to Chrome Dev Tools and make use of Performance tab to check what's taking the most time. In the Performance tab, we have uh, the option to see which thing is taking too much time. This is the first thing we can check. The next thing we can check is using the React Dev Tools extension. React Dev Tools. The above one is Chrome Dev Tools. This ne the next is React Dev Tools. This is a Chrome extension that we can check in that we can track for unnecessary re-renders unnecessary re-renders unnecessary re-renders or infinite loop of re-renders can make the app slower we can check that also the third is using use memo and use callback like in use memo or react memo and use callback this can be used for making it fast and tracking where it is making the app slow using virtualization virtualization means in my react interview questions video i have explained it what is virtualization suppose you have like 10 thousand or one lakh rows of records so you don't need to render all the records in one go okay you will render whatever thing or whatever amount of rows are in the window the window size that's why you will load or render first maybe 50 then next 50 whenever you scroll then next 50 then next 50 so it's based on the scrolling this is called virtualization for that we can use the packages like react window or react virtualized yeah this kind of packages we can use for virtualization and apart from that avoid inline functions or objects objects why because uh, whenever a component re-renders okay, whenever a component re-renders and if functions or objects are pa passed as a props to children components in that case these functions or objects will be recreated on re-render so the children will think that the objects or functions are changed and they will keep on re-rendering okay they will keep on re-rendering this is a problem that's why avoid inline functions and use use memo or use callback in that case this is how we can track and fix this kind of issues yeah for this you can give one real world example like an e-commerce website it's showing 10,000 or 20,000 products but without virtualization it will lag with virtualization it will be easy and it will take less memory and less resources of the browser to render let's talk about the next question how do you prevent a login page from being accessible after the user is logged in so suppose you are at a concert you go to a music concert and once you have entered with your ticket security won't let you go back to the ticket counter again right just like that once you logged in the user should not be able to go to the login screen again unless he or she has logged out so that is the same scenario based question how we can answer this so to answer this we should make use of protected routes in the react or maybe in any ui library protected routes what are protected routes route means page url so we should only be able to go to home when you are logged in logged in we are we are adding a protection here just like that we can use protected protected route which will be based on some flag that is if you are logged in or not this, this is the first thing the next thing is keep track of authentication state how we can track the authentication state there can be a flag like each authenticate authenticated initially it will be false and uh, we can make it globally true after login and it will be passed to each and every component of the react react components for this we can make use of context and redux to pass this flag from the top level to the each child component the third the routes or the browser router should be configured such that if this thing if this flag is true it will not add the login related routes so what i mean by this suppose for example 
example if your state is if each auth means is authenticated in that case you should add the app level routes like home or dashboard that kind of stuff else in this in this case we will add a login forget password if authentication is there we will pass the routes of home dashboard or what whatever the protected routes and if the authentication is not there we can use only the public routes like the login forget password reset password only that kind of stuff it will be driven by a state it will be driven by a state and this state will be passed by context and redux whenever the user is logged in it will not have the these kind of routes they will be automatically redirected okay they will be automatically redirected to the main routes like the home or dashboard that's how you can solve this problem so you can just take example of banking applications where uh, once you are logged in you can't visit login again so that's how it works in the real world the next question is how do you handle api errors gracefully in ui what does this mean suppose some api uh, returns an error that uh, some technical error okay? but uh, you can't show this kind of messages to user right for this to handle gracefully you should show some user friendly messages for example something went wrong okay? something uh, went wrong contact support so this is kind of a graceful full error or exception handling this technical information user is not interested in we should show some meaningful messages to users this is the meaning of this question so how we can handle this we imagine you are ordering food online right if restaurant is closed you you should you should expect a message a polite message that yeah we are not serving food right now and we'll be back again this is kind of a good message but we should not see a blank screen right if if the restaurant is closed the answer to this will be always use try catch right catch so that if you are using async await you will get the error in the catch block and based on the error you should show like using toast message or some notification that this this is failed if you are using the normal promises you you can use dot catch block catch block where you will get the callback and there you can handle it right this is where you should put that code okay. and in case of the error we should track some state that state can be used at a hook that error set error set error and once this error appears you should show some fallback ui that fallback ui can be a toast message toast message like so you must have seen in the right bottom or left bottom corner and there is a, this cross button and uh, and there is a success or failure icon and they say error this kind of toast message this is called a toast message toast message we can make use of this to show in this case and also if error occurs what we can do is we can make use of retry retry button we should have retry button so this you can tell to the interviewer we can make use of retry button to handle it gracefully and also uh, we can make use of error boundaries error boundaries we can make use of error boundaries error boundaries helps us to catch the errors just like try catch and uh, we can make use of error boundaries here also we can make use of categorization okay categories of error what are categories of errors uh, we can categorize errors based on network error second is server side error server side okay. unauthorized errors unauthorization errors based on this we can handle it in different languages and uh, so users should be users should be notified in a good way yeah that's how we can handle the api request gracefully the next question is a component is fetching same data multiple times unnecessarily how would you fix it uh, how to answer this question so we can cache the api responses using react query so we can cache the responses using react query we can use react query package for caching so that if if the data is not changing frequently we can cache it so it will not hit the api again and it will serve that data data from the cache the next thing we can do is to store in context or redux store the fetch data in context or redux and if that data is present will not call fetch again will not fetch that it again so that's how we can avoid refetching the data unnecessarily yeah and if if it is some calculation based then in that case we can use memo so that based on this calculation result if you are fetching it use memo so that it will calculate just once based on the dependencies and it will not recall the thing again a real world example here is suppose you have a dashboard you have a dashboard and it has multiple charts or sections and there is a profile section of the user section if each chart is fetching that user section data unnecessarily what you can do is so you can fetch it globally globally and pass it down to each chart using context or redux so that's how you will not refetch the data again okay, that's how you can handle the redundancy of the data the next question is how do you optimize bundle size in large react app i 
think of this like if you are traveling right you don't take your complete wardrobe or cupboard with you right you take some part of it which is necessary in the travel and you travel with it correct just like that whenever you are writing thousands of files in your application you don't need to ship it everything to the production so you need to bundle it and organize it somehow so that it will take minimum size on the user's device and it will be efficient for the performance so that's how we need to optimize the bundle size the, the majors are code splitting you already know this maybe code splitting using react lazy yeah you can tell the interviewer that we can use code splitting with react lazy and the suspense uh, the next thing we can do is enable tree shaking in the bundler tree shaking in wheat or webpack so this is very important the tree shaking it is basically it re uh, removes the unused imports okay, so suppose you have some imports that are unused it means that code is not used in that case at the build time the tree shaking feature will remove those unused code and it will not be part of the final bundle uh, we can make use of dynamic imports dynamic imports what are dynamic imports suppose you have to import some module at the runtime at that point you can make use of this import function which returns a promise and uh, it has the dot then and dot catch block and there this chunk will be downloaded at the runtime and it will not be part of the main chunk it will not be part of the main javascript so dynamic imports are very much useful here and the next thing is uh, compressing the assets okay compress assets or uh, what i mean what i mean by assets is like images fonts okay? images or fonts so you should compress it compress it using some library or some algorithm so that it will not take too much bundle size and it will be the, the overall size will be reduced yeah these kind of measures you can take to reduce the bundle size and also you can maybe cache some static assets caching you can do so that if it is present on users device don't ship it users device don't ship it so that it will reduce the downloading of the assets or anything that is static so that's how you can tackle this and that's it these are the top five real world front-end interview questions that you absolutely need to know now here is the deal this is only part one next files are also important so before you go comment interview questions if you want detailed answers and extra resources and make sure you follow and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any important interview related content that's it for today bye bye